Hey, Energy Express friends, it's me, Joel, and welcome back. My mom is always telling me that I need to learn something new every day. And so I thought, hmm, we should pass that along to our Energy Express friends. So we've invited our friend, Misha Poor from the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here at West Virginia University to tell us a little bit more about an important subject. Today, we're gonna learn about ableism. Take it away, Misha. Hello, Mountaineer family. Misha Poor here, Vice President for the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Let's talk. Today, let's talk about ableism. In very basic terms, ableism is thinking people with typical abilities are somehow superior to people with disabilities. Take a look at this illustration. It shows a group of students waiting to get into a school whose entryway is covered with snow. One student in a wheelchair asks if the ramp could be cleared. An employee says that they will get to the ramp after clearing the steps for the others. This reflects a flawed perspective. We often make decisions and take actions based on the belief that if we only focus on a few people by doing things differently, the majority somehow won't benefit. But as this case illustrates, it's often true that taking care to include the few also serves everyone. Now, not all disabilities are obvious or apparent to others, but what we end up doing is we put people in the position of having to explain their disabilities or defend their need for disability rights rather than taking the time to accommodate people or create universal accessibility. So how can you make sure to avoid ableism, you ask? Here's a few suggestions. Believe people. When people disclose that they have a disability, never accuse people of faking their disability. When planning an event, ensure that it is located in an accessible location. Include closed captioning on videos and alternative text on images. Don't assume you know what someone needs, ask what might be most helpful. And unless explicitly asked, do not speak on behalf of someone with a disability. Never touch a person without their consent, including people with disabilities or the mobility equipment. And remember, accommodating others does not create more work or cost more, but it does show you care and you respect them. Like they say, when you know better, you do better, and we all can do better. So until next time, let's go Mountaineers. Next up, we're going to learn something really cool. We're going to learn how to make an LED flashlight. Let's go visit our friends, Jen and Ben, and learn exactly how we do that. Hi, I'm Dr. Jen robertson Honecker, STEM Specialist for WVU Extension's 4-H Youth Development Program. Hi, I'm Ben. Today, we're going to talk about um, making your own flashlight, and we're going to walk you through this activity so you can do it at home. Before we get started, I just wanted to talk about an important safety warning with this activity. We will be using coin cell batteries, which can be a choking hazard. So this activity should only be done by older children with the assistance of an adult. And once the flashlight's finished, you should keep it away from young children or small animals. So let's talk about the materials we need for today's activity. So first of all, you can find step-by-step -step instructions for this activity on our website. And we're gonna be using jumbo craft sticks, LEDs, coin cell batteries, jumbo paper clips, copper tape, masking tape, and scissors. You can find locally in a big box store. However, we did order our LEDs and our copper tape online from someplace like Amazon or SparkFun. Are you ready to get started with our actual activity? Ready? Okay, so we're gonna start with a jumbo craft stick. All right, and we're gonna use copper tape for this activity. Why do you think we're using copper tape, Ben, instead of just regular tape like masking tape? Because it's conductive. That's right, it's conductive. So we're making a circuit, and circuits need to um, have electricity travel through them. So we need a material that can carry electricity, and we call materials that can carry electricity conductive. So we'll need two pieces of copper tape, just a little bit bigger than the craft stick, and then we'll cut it down as we go. And I'm gonna cut two for myself also. 
And this activity is one where you really have to pay attention to details. So you don't want to rush through this activity as we're doing it. Okay, so what we're going to do, Ben, is we're going to take our copper tape and we want to run it down the length of our jumbo popsicle stick or craft stick. We want it to be relatively in the center and we also don't want it to go all the way to the ends. We want to leave about a half an inch to an inch from each edge of the of the popsicle stick. Now, something important to remember about copper tape is that it's just a foil and it wrinkles really easily. So once you get it started, don't peel it all the way down. Um, just peel a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna center it again. Remember, we wanna have it about a half an inch from the edge, from the end of the popsicle stick. I wanna center it as best I can. And once you get towards the end, again, you don't wanna go all the way to the bottom, you can just rip it because it's kind of like aluminum foil. It just rips really easily. So there you can see our one side and we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side of the pop popsicle stick, our jumbo craft stick with the other piece of copper tape. That looks great. Okay, our next step, we're gonna move on to the battery. Now, you've probably used batteries a lot. You have a lot of electronic toys that use batteries. Why are batteries important? Because they produce electricity. Yeah, they produce electricity, so we can have things that we don't necessarily wanna plug into a wall. And they're portable. Run. They're portable, right, that's a great word, they're portable. So, um, batteries have chemical reactions in them that produce electrons. And electrons, once they flow, that's what electricity is. And you know that every battery has what? When, what's important about the battery? Two sides. Two sides. What are those sides? Do you remember? Positive and negative. Positive and negative. So coin cell batteries are just like a regular battery. They have a positive and negative, um, just like the ones you use in your toys. They're just a little different in how they do it. So the positive is always marked. Can you see it, the positive on there? the plus, right? And so that means the back side that has sort of these little dimples in them, that's the negative, all right? So positive and negative. So what we're gonna do is you just pick an end, doesn't really matter which, I'm gonna use this one right here, and we wanna set down our battery so that the negative side is down, touching the copper foil tape, and the positive is pointed up. Okay, now we're gonna tape that in a minute, but for now, we're gonna create the switch for our flashlight, okay? So um, switches help us uh, turn things on and off, and, and they really are meant for you know, changing the direction of the electric flow from on and off. And we're gonna use a large jumbo paper clip for this, but we're gonna open it up so that it forms a V just like that. Now, this is the tricky part of this activity and you may need help from an adult to do this because what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to tape our jumbo paper clip, our popsicle stick, and our battery together. But we're gonna have to do it in a very particular way and I'll explain why in just a minute. Before we get to that, let's look at the back side here of our popsicle stick. So this is the opposite side to where we're gonna keep our battery. We're gonna flip it over. And when you're positioning this, you wanna make sure that, um, I'm using the big side of my jumbo paper clip. You wanna make sure that as we tape it, that paper clip is touching the copper tape. And you wanna have it cut, touching the copper tape on this back side as much as possible. So I'm putting the long arm of it so that when I tape it, that'll be touching. In this way, we're making a circuit. And a circuit is just a path of travel for our electrons. So the more that those two touch, the better, um, because there'll be a better connection and we'll have more electrons flowing through there. All right, so the other side of my paper clip should be hovering above where my battery is going to sit, but not directly touching it. So Ben, 
Why do you think we want our battery over here a little bit away from this other side of the paper clip instead of squished all the way down here so that they're touching? So that the light isn't always on? Right, because if it was touching, we'd have no switch. In fact, we, when we create um, a path that we don't want in a circuit, do you know what that's called? A short circuit, right. So we don't want to create a short circuit here. Um, in fact, that's why we also don't want those pieces of copper tape on either side to ever be touching and why we kept those spaces from the edges. So short circuits just mean that we're creating a shorter path, the unwanted path for electrons to travel, and they'll always take that path, which means then they won't do what we want them to do, which in this case is turn on our flashlight. So we're gonna leave a space here between those two. All right, now we're gonna tape that in just a second. I'm gonna set that down. When we tape it, do you think we're gonna use copper tape this time? Instead, we're gonna use masking tape. Why do you think it's important now to use masking tape? Because masking tape is insulating. Insulating, right. Remember, we are using copper tape because it's conducting, because it will allow the electrons to travel from the battery to our LED. In this case, we're just trying to hold our battery and our um, paper clip to the popsicle stick here, and we're actually wrapping it around. We don't want to create a short circuit, so we're going to use um, regular masking tape, which is insulating. To say that something's insulating simply means that it's not conductive. It will not allow electrons to travel through. So I would rip off a piece of tape about this size. You don't need it to be too big. All right, and here's where it gets tricky. So I want to line up that jumbo, oops, I want to line up that jumbo um, paper clip so it's touching as much of the um, copper tape as possible. I want to have my battery positive side up, making sure it's touching the copper tape on the other side. And now I'm going to start to tape my battery, but I'm only going to tape it from the top half of the battery. I don't want to cover the entire battery up. I want to leave the bottom half of the battery exposed. So I'm going to be very careful as I wrap this around here. And also as I'm wrapping it, I'm also pushing against my tape nice and tight to make sure there's a nice firm connection there. Um, because we want those things to touch again so we can create a path. So you can test here to make sure that when you push down your switch, which is our jumbo tape paper clip, that it should be touching the bare bottom of that battery. Now nothing's happening yet because we haven't completed our circuit, but that's important. We don't want to completely cover that with tape where it would be insulating. And so when the paper clip came down, it would never really touch the battery and we'd never get a completed circuit. So yeah, so I can hear the metal touching. So that should work. All right. Well, we are almost there. The last thing we need to add to our flashlight is the, the light, right? In this case, we're using what's called an LED. An LED, those are three letters that stand for light emitting diode. So this is a very special kind of light that is um, unidirectional. To say something is unidirectional means that the electrons can only travel in one direction. It isn't like a regular light where we, it doesn't matter the way we put it in there, it'll work. We have to be very um, careful about how we orient the LED relative to our battery. All right, so if you look at your LED, what do you notice about the two legs that come off the bottom? Uh, they're different sizes. They're different sizes, that's right. So they do this on purpose to let us know. Um, it also has a positive and negative, just like our battery. The longer leg is called the positive lead, and the smaller leg is called the negative lead. I like to use a, a little um, trick to help me remember that, to say that the shorter leg has been subtracted, right? So subtracted, negative, that uh, lets me remember that this is the negative leg. Now, if you remember, when we put our battery on this, we had what? Which side was up and which side was down? The positive side was up and the negative was down. The negative was down. So what that means is, is the negative side of the battery is touching this piece of copper tape. So we want the shorter negative leg also touching this side of the copper tape 
and we want the longer positive leg touching this side. Now we can test if we've done this correctly before we tape it. It's always a good idea to test before you tape by holding it nice and tight against that copper tape and pushing down. And it works. So we've, we've oriented those legs properly. If I had done it opposite, and I try to push it down, nothing happens, again, because it's unidirectional. Also, if you do that and nothing happens, but you know you've got the legs oriented properly and the battery oriented properly, you might not be holding it tight enough to um, the copper tape because it needs a good connection. All right, so now that we've got it oriented correctly, we're gonna set it down carefully and use more tape. And which tape are we gonna use again? The insulating tape. Right, the masking tape, the insulating masking tape. So, because if we wrapped it around with copper tape, we'd just make another short circuit. And the, um, the electrons would never travel through the LED. So nothing really tricky about this when you're taping them down. The only thing you wanna watch for is make sure that those legs are actually touching the copper tape. And then I like to push it down nice and tight, rubbing it with my fingernails along the edges so that it's got a really good connection. Because if it doesn't, if there's space between it, we won't have a complete circuit. Now a couple things to look for if having trouble and it's not working at this point. So it could be a couple different things. Um, one, I always, when I'm using my switch, I always use my fingers on the back of the paper clip and the, uh, my thumb on the front um, because sometimes it's like a seesaw. If I push on this side, it actually pushes the other side of the paper clip away. So this makes a nice tight connection on both sides. Um, you could have gotten your LED backwards, so check for that. Or it could be loose here and not actually um, connected, so you might want to check that. And lastly, you might just want to check the orientation of your battery. Did you accidentally put positive on the bottom, um, negative on top? But other than that, those are the most common mistakes that are easy to fix because we can just untape it and retape it back. So it's a nice, easy activity to correct if you make any mistakes. All right, so today we made a simple circuit, and a simple circuit just contains several fundamental pieces. So for us, that was our power source, which we used the battery. We had a conducting medium, which was our copper tape. We had a load, so that's usually the thing that we want to turn on, the, the thing that's doing work. And for us, we use the light or the LED. And then lastly, you don't have to have this in every circuit, but a switch is really useful, so you can turn things on and off easily and you don't run out of battery power. So for our switch, we used our paper clip. So this was a fun little activity, again, that you can do at home. Um, we've now created our very own flashlight. If you're lucky in life, like me, you have some great friends. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, what makes them such a great friend? Let's learn a little bit more about some qualities of great friends. Good friends are important. To have good friends, you need to be a good friend. Follow the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated. This month, we are going to share qualities that make a good friend. I'll start. Kind. Good listener. Always be there for you. Supportive. Loyalty. Pleasantness. Caring. Patient. Honesty. Non judgmental. Helpful. Trustworthy. Empathetic. To have good friends, you need to be a good friend. What qualities are most important to you? What qualities do your friends have? Make 
making a friendship is like planting a seed and watching it grow. If you nurture it, you might end up with a big bouquet of friends. It's that time. It's craft time! Pull out all your craft supplies, guys. We're gonna make something fun. And today, we're gonna learn how to make our own stained glass. Hi, I'm Angela Lawrence, and I work for West Virginia University Extension Service. Today, we'll be making a stained glass window, which requires a household window and just a few basic supplies. The supplies that we'll need for today's project include a washable glue, which can be any brand, one disposable paper plate, any brand of a crafting paintbrush, and some tissue paper squares. This is a great chance to repurpose and reuse tissue paper um, that you may have left from gifts. You just want to make sure that you have a variety of colors. To prepare the activity, I'm going to tear the tissue paper into different sizes and shapes. I've moved my supplies next to the window and now we're going to get started by using our paintbrush just to apply some glue. I'm going to start by using my paintbrush to apply some glue to the window. I'm going to start in the center square here and I'll need just enough for the beginning piece of tissue. I'm just applying some glue right here. Use your fingers just to press down that one piece of tissue. I'm going to make sure that I'm getting a variety of colors here because I do want it to look like a colorful stained glass window. By, op by overlapping different pieces of tissue, we'll get a different look. When they're on top of each other and not quite sticking, I just add a little more glue.
You can also do this project with saran wrap. You tape the saran wrap to the window using some painter's tape before you get started. You just do what I'm doing here, but directly onto the saran wrap. And then for cleaning up after that, it just requires pulling down the saran wrap and cleaning the glue residue that may stick outside of the steam, outside of the saran wrap. And now you can see here our beautiful final product. When it comes time to take down the art and clean the window, you just simply want to use a warm cloth or sponge. You wet the areas of the window. You let that soak for about 10 minutes and then the tissue will pull right off. If you have any residue left, a simple glass cleaner will help. Thank you for joining me for this activity today. I hope that you'll have an opportunity to make your own stained glass window this summer. Hey, did you guys have fun today? I know I did. Well, have a great week, have a great day, and we'll see you next time on Energy Express.